Today we are starting a new quilt along on this beautiful quilt by Joan Breeze. Orange red thread because there is this wonderful color. It was kind of um, Okay, so the border treatment that we're going to be doing right now in this uh, orange peel quilt is um, going to be a nice, simple, but elegant uh, feathery or flowery, whichever way you want to look at it, design. So we're going to start with a basic vine, and then we're going to move into adding some petals to that vine, and then we're going to actually move into how to do the design that we're actually doing on the quilt. So let's head down to the paper, and also don't forget you can print off the um, the uh, PDFs uh, of this uh, design so that you can trace along with me um, and frankly just go look at the separate tutorial for the uh, petaled vine design and then you can get the, the uh, PDFs there to trace off. Alright, let's head down. Okay, so now we're going to get started with the first part of learning this design and that is the basic vine work. So if you're new to vine work, let me show you how to do that. You're gonna copy off your um, PDF and um, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna trace this. Trace this right with your pen, just right, right over it. You can make as many copies of this once you download it as you want. Over, back, you're just gonna trace and trace and trace and trace. And I say trace this about 10 times. Then go down here and do one. Then have some lined paper or create your own from copy paper, and then you're going to do the same thing. So for that basic vine design, what we're going to do is we want to think of it as a question mark. So again, let me bring this guy back. See the shape? It's not a six. It's actually a question mark. So there's the top of the ski slope that swoops down. There's the top of the ski slope, and then it swirls up. So you always want to remember that it is a question mark shape. So we're going to start, we're going to do our swirl up, I'm going to backtrack around to the back of the head, I don't care how good your backtracking is, and we call this the back of the head of the hook, we call this the top of the head, and we call this the eye of the hook. So we're going to backtrack back to the back of the head, but when we come back here, we don't just come to here, we don't just come to here, I like to backtrack all the way to here, and then come under come away and flip my hook the opposite way. Backtrack around on that hook to the back of the head, come away and flip it up. Backtrack around to the back of the head and up, come away and swirl down. So we're gonna continue practicing that rhythm and notice how far back I backtrack on that hook. You wanna come just a bit further than you think intuitively that you need to come. Because what that does is it gives you a wonderful rhythm of movement. Because with most quilt designs, you need to have a rhythm of movement. If you only come back to here or a little back, uh, back like to here instead of up, then what will happen is you'll have an awkward movement. So you always want to find the sweet spot where you actually have a nice rhythm movement. Okay, so you're going to start here again. Swirl up. Backtrack around and up. Come away and swirl down. Backtrack around. Come away and swirl up. Now here's the thing. Notice that what I'm doing here is I am coming away when I do my next hook. That means I'm leaving space in here. Do you see that space? What will happen with some folks when they start doing this design is they'll come back to here and then they'll echo way up here and swirl around. And so what happens is they don't leave a lot of space here. Now when we go to add petals, they're going to run into trouble because they won't have enough space. What you actually do is once you backtrack to here, you come away and swirl down. You want to leave that cleavage space right in there so that you could plant your petals or your fronds. Okay, so now let's try that again. Swirl up. Backtrack around to the back of the head. Swirl down. If you think, need to think of it like a ladle handle, scoop the soup up. 
backtrack around, dump the soup out, backtrack around, scoop the soup up, backtrack around, dump the soup out. Now here's the other problem people will run into. What they'll do is they'll be doing this and what will happen is they'll come up here and uh, let me do a swirl up. If you don't backtrack around to the back of the head, you'll end up making tidal waves. You'll come out like this and swirl up. You'll come out like this and swirl up. And then you have your tidal waves. If you get tidal waves, what you need to realize is that you forgot to backtrack around to the back of the head, which, which will flip that hook the opposite way. Backtrack around to the back of the head, which will flip that question mark shape the opposite way. And so those are the keys to do nice vine work. So that's your step number one. I want you to take uh, your um, the PDF and then take a piece of paper with some lines on it that you've drawn and just practice that, practice that, practice that. Now, here's the other thing you need to do when you do this. What you also want to do then is you want to practice it from the opposite way. So you want to start here and swirl up. Backtrack around, swirl down, backtrack around, swirl up. Because every design that we learn, you need to learn it from left to right, right to left, south north, and north south. So you need to be able to practice it in all different directions so that when you get to the quilt, you won't be struggling with having them all going the same way, especially when you're working around a sash or an inner border or, or with the border design we're doing, we're actually going off both directions with this. Okay, so now that's number one. So take a little time, practice that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move into number two, step number two in our practice before we get to the actual design. And step number two is going to be doing this lovely design with the petals in between. So on that, what we're going to do is we're going to start with swirl up, backtrack around to the back of the head, come away and swirl down. Now, instead of just backtracking to the back of the head, I backtrack all the way back to the previous hook. And now in this space that I said to leave, that cleavage space, now we're going to plant our fronds or our petals. Um, and I'm just simply going to do the humpback. Swing back touch, bump the top, new frond. Now once you finish that petal, you immediately come away and give yourself another hook. Once you have that other hook in place, you backtrack all the way back to the previous hook. Now it's upside down. Back, bump, frond. And if there's room, put in as many as you want. You'll get consistent where they will be consistent. Once I finish that last frond or petal, I always come away and do my next frond. Now, again, however much cleavage room you leave in here, that's going to define how many petals you put in that space. And you'll get consistent with how you do that. Don't worry about, oh, this one's wide, the other one's narrow, the other one's wide. Give yourself a break. Let yourself just kind of learn the motion of the design. And then again, then you can focus on, okay, consistency. Uh, some people will say, well, can I measure and put a little chalk line every uh, three inches, four inches, or however long they want those? Absolutely. Um, I've done that a few times on show quilts. Uh, but you will get to the point once you draw this for about 20 minutes on paper while you're sitting in front of the TV, you know, the, the gig. Um, what will happen is you'll define your own consistency and it'll be almost perfect every single time. So again, let's look at that again. Swirl up, backtrack around to the back of the head just like the basic vine, come away and swirl down. Backtrack around and back, come all the way back and plant petals. Now if you don't want to do the humpbacks, you can always do a double bump based on the traditional feathers. Those molar feathers, you could do any shape you wanted in there. Come away and swirl up, backtrack around and up to the last one, double bump, curve back, double bump, curve back. The minute I finish the last petal, I always come away and give myself another hook. Backtrack all the way back, up, come around, I could give myself veins, 
I could do traditional long arm pedals. Come away. Again, any pedal you want to do. Now, remember, here is where people get lost. As they'll do this and everything's going well. Come away. Swirl back. What if I wanted to put fern fronds? I could do fern fronds. Fern frond. Fern frond. If you want to make it something a little more organic. Come away. Now, here's what some people will do. They'll come down, just like we said earlier on that other one. Do you see? I, it's, it's right, but it's wrong because I didn't come away and swirl up. I didn't leave any space. So now I have this. So now when I come back here, there's not a lot of room to plant anything in that space. Does that make sense? Okay, so now again, the correct way would be to come away and swirl down. Now I've left room here. Backtrack back, up, back, up, back, up, back, and then you would continue on. So this is how you're going to practice that. You're going to practice that with this guy. These are the humpbacks when you practice that. Um, remember, you do your swirl up, backtrack, and swirl down, and then backtrack all the way back to the previous one. So it, it takes a minute to get the rhythm. If you need to watch this a few times while you're tracing what I have on your paper, then go ahead and do that. So again, let's do one more. Swirl up, backtrack, swirl down, backtrack, bump, boom, around, swing back, bump, around, come away, swirl up, backtrack, bump, down, up. This has the option for another really cool design that I'll, I'll show you down the road here. Back, bump, up, bump, frond, up, bump, frond. And then you would continue on. So you're just filling that in. Remember your fronds are right side up, upside down, right side up, upside down. So you're going to be flipping those um, all three ways. So again, Take your practice piece and you're going to be auditioning that. Now, the next thing we're going to do, let's take that design and let's go into the border design. Um, one of the simple border designs I like to use, which is this one, which is starting in the middle and going out the opposite way until I come to my cornerstone. A lot of you know that when I do borders, as uh, you will see if you have seen the um, the orange peel quilt is I like to plant cornerstones and then have my design stop at the cornerstone. I don't have to worry about math. It ends where it ends. It is what it is. Um, and it's a nice, simple border design. But this is exactly the same as this guy right here. It's exactly the same. The only difference is the way that I placed my swirl ups and my swirl down. So let me show you how I did that. Bring down our border sheet and then you'll see me quilt it out as well. So let's get that down. Widen that so we get the full border in. Okay. So now What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a figure eight. Now, on this border, obviously what I did is I, I, had my, I measured my border, I located the center, I put a chalk mark. I then measured the width of my border, and I located the center, and I put another chalk mark in there. Um, so those are the only preliminary chalk marks that you need to add. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply start quilting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, lock my stitches right in that spot right there. I'm going to do a figure eight. So I've got a figure eight. I'm going to come away. Now my first swirl, I'm going to use these ups and downs. So I'm going to split the design. So as I head off to the right, I'm going to do my swirl down on the top. I'm actually going to backtrack all the way back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant some fronds right in that spot, maybe two, come away. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come away just a little bit and swirl up 
down on the bottom half. So my swirl downs happen on the top half. My swirl ups happen on the bottom half. Now I'm going to come back here. And now I'm going to put my petals here in this space. So I'm going to swing back, bump the top, new frond, swing back, bump the top, squeeze in a little guy. Now remember, the minute I finish that last petal, now I'm going to come away and up and swirl down. So this is my cleavage point. We're not, when we did the straight across, we had those same spaces, but now this is exactly the same thing. It's just that we're angling it just a little bit different. But it, it is exactly the same. So now I come back, swing back, bump, frond, swing back, bump, frond, come away and under and swirl up. Backtrack all the way back, down, back, bump, down, back, bump. Come away and up and swirl down. Backtrack back, back, bump, frond, back, bump, frond. Come away and swirl up. So keep my swirl ups low and my swirl downs high. Back, bump, frond, back, bump, frond, come away and swirl up, down, back, bump, frond, back, bump, frond, come away and swirl up, back, back, bump, Frond, back, bump, frond. Now I'm here, and I'm actually now, this line signifies that's where my cornerstone is. I could stop there, or I could go ahead and come up and just go right into that tip, come back down, and just put a few fronds coming up there to kind of finish it off. Lock my stitches, and then I would move back here, lock my stitches here, and then what I would do is I would wrap, I put a few fronds on this side, and then maybe put, give myself a little teardrop and give myself my little bumblebee butt, maybe fill in with some micro work that right there, just like that, okay? And then I'm going to come back to here, and now same thing, I'm going to mirror what I have here. So this one's going to come away and swirl down. And yes, if you want perfection, you could measure from the center two and a half or three inches or whatever the measurement that works well for you. This is why you practice and play, and you could put marks in there so that you end up um, perfectly consistent. The one thing that I have found is typically our body knows consistency once it does something about ten times, and it will get it right whether you put those marks in or not. Come back, up. And now when I come here, I swirl up. So I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing, except I'm going to come the opposite way. Back. 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 Come away and up. And do the same thing. Come down. Back. Back. Come away and swirl up low, and I would continue all the way across. And actually, when I was right here, I should have done my pedal. Pedal, if you have to go back here and relock once you finish going that way, just go ahead and do that. You're not going to get, no one's going to come and take your machine away. Okay, so now that's that, and so that's where we have our um, wonderful oddball border design that works wonderful, whether it's in narrow spaces or whether it's in wide spaces. And we'll be back with um, some more of these types of tutorials using this design. I've got some wonderful ways in which you could mirror it and it looks amazing inside of a border. Um, so now let's head over to the machine real quick and let's see on that um, the uh, orange peel quilt how that quilts out.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is the drawing that we just drawn out, uh, have drawn out on paper. Um, this is what we're going to be doing here. And so I'm going to start with my figure eight here in the center. I'm going to go off to the right, finish that, come back, lock my stitches, and then go off to the left with that particular feather design. So bring my machine over. I've drawn the first few out just to kind of give myself a little guide. Swirl around, backtrack just like we did on the paper. And in that center, I'm going to come around, scoop around and in. Backtrack, scoop around, come around, swirl up, backtrack all the way back, wrap some feathers around that hook. 